Hello friends, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya from wallstreetmojo.com. This is part 24 of our ratio analysis video series and in this installment we learn all about the DuPont ROE. In simple terms, this DuPont ROE formula breaks the return on equity into three parts. The net profit margins, the asset turnover and the equity multiplier. Breaking this ROE in this way helps us understand the reasons why the ROE is higher or lower. So in this tutorial, we basically have four objectives. First, we'll understand the nuances of DuPont ROE. Number two, we'll look at its formula and the calculations. Number three, we'll calculate DuPont ROE on Colgate. And number four, we'll look at its interpretation and uses. But before we jump into the tutorial, a quick reminder, we will be needing all the working files of Colgate case study for this video. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, please do so from the link in the description box below. And to keep yourself updated with investment banking and financial modeling concepts, please do subscribe to our channel, Wall Street Mojo. So let's get started. What is DuPont ROE? DuPont ROE is a part of the ratio analysis framework and it comes under the operating profitability category. In our previous videos, we discussed return on total equity and return on owner's equity. Now we'll be discussing DuPont ROE. So by the way, DuPont ROE is ROE as such. So it doesn't do anything in terms of new set of calculations. The ROE which you get from uh, return on total equity is the same as the DuPont ROE. Okay. But uh, DuPont ROE helps us in understanding what is contributing to that ROE number. So if DuPont ROE is 15%, what are the reasons, you know, it, a company has 15% of ROE? So DuPont ROE actually tries to understand and investigate the reasons behind it. Okay. So uh, let's understand, you know, how uh, it works. Okay. So first, before we move on, first, let's revise what is the ROE formula. The return on equity formula was net income divided by your average shareholders equity right so what does the roe gives us it tells us how much the company is generating in terms of income that's net profit or the net income per unit of your shareholders equity investment so if the roe is let's say 15 percent it means that the company is generating dollar 15 of net income per dollar hundred of uh, shareholders equity investments okay so that's that's what we know what roe is all about now let us look at what dupont roe is dupont roe is basically divides this formula which we have as net income divided by average shareholders equity into three parts okay so i'll, I'll put the three parts uh, one by one and then we'll discuss that in detail the first part is net income divided by your sales okay what that is net income divided by sales if you remember net profit divided by sales is nothing but profit margins we'll discuss this in a moment then you multiply this by your sales divided by your average total assets okay so sales divided by your average total assets do you think you know this this is nothing but your asset turnover ratio all right i'll, I'll come to that as well too and the third part is your average assets divided by your average shareholders equity all right so this is the third part so what we have done is we have divided this formula into three parts so you can see here that net income divided by sales so this is something that we introduced in the denominator and that gets cancelled in the numerator as well right so net income divided by sales into sales divided by average assets so sales sales get gets cancelled likewise average total assets was introduced in the denominator and we have this in the numerator as well so when you multiply all these three at once you will find that you get to the roe form so as i said this dupont roe will give you the same result as the roe but it helps us in understanding uh, how the roe numbers are adding up so Let's look at uh, these one by one. So what is this net income divided by sales? This is called as profit margins, okay? Now, when you're analyzing a company, you 
pre- pretty much are aware of what the profit margins of the company are, right? And uh, you might also be aware of how the industry uh, profit margins are, right? So if the profit margins of this company which you are analyzing is above, let's say the industry peers, the ROE should be actually better than the peers, right? Though ROE is a factor of these three, but uh, the profit margin which is higher should contribute to higher ROE. All right. So we, we did discuss about a lot of uh, profit margin examples in our previous videos. Uh, think of retail, right? Retail has how much uh, profit margin, net profit margin? I think it's around 5%. We did discuss that retail is a very high turnover. Uh, I mean, it, it depends a lot on high sales, high number of sales, high amount of sales. But their profitability margins are very, very low. So retail has 5%. Likewise, hospitality has around 8% profit margins. Restaurant has around uh, 15% profit margins. So uh, pretty much as an industry, you're aware of this profit margin. So this becomes very helpful, this term. Okay. So that you can do a comparison between what is contributing to higher ROE on or lesser ROE. The second term that is uh, the sales upon average assets. This is called as asset turnover ratio we have done this earlier as well what does this tell us this tells us how efficiently the company is able to utilize its assets in order to generate sales okay so uh, a high asset turnover means that using the same amount of assets this company is able to generate higher higher amount of sales all right so uh, for example since we are discussing about retail retail has a asset turnover of greater than two so obviously as i said though they have lower margins but their asset turnover is very high and that's why this business becomes feasible as such the third part of this formula this is the average assets divided by average shareholders equity this is called as leverage factor okay so now what does this leverage factor essentially means leverage factor essentially means that how is your it tells us how the assets are basically financed so if let's say the leverage factor is one what will that mean it means that all the assets have been financed by your equity right so equity has financed 100 percent of your assets let's say if the leverage factor was two what did that mean if the leverage factor is two that means Half of the asset has been financed by equity and half of the asset, obviously, when we're talking about funding, there are two types of fundings, equity and debt. So if half has been contributed by equity, the other half will be of debt, right? So debt would contribute the other half, that is one, one and one. So that will become two. If the leverage factor is three, this means that equity is one and the debt contribution will be two third of it, right? So this is how we actually interpret the leverage factors. But one thing that you need to understand here with respect to leverage factor is that it doesn't mean that higher the leverage factor, better it is. All right. Because if you look at if the factor is higher, then it might turn out to be a risky proposition from the capital structure point of view. Right. This would mean that the capital structure of the company is so leveraged that uh, uh, debt amount is very high. So we might have to also look at the other variables like whether the company is able to generate enough EBITDA in order to pay its interest and other uh, debt related obligations, whether they'll be able to pay or not. So we cannot say that the leverage factor higher is better. It should be closer to the industry as such. All right. So this is how you divide your uh, ROE into three parts and that's the thing we call it as DuPont ROE. So let us now do a quick calculation of DuPont ROE and see how it is done. So this is how we can represent the DuPont formula in a final form. ROE is equal to profit margin multiplied by your total asset turnover multiplied by your leverage factor. So we have discussed each of the three, uh, but that's how you will uh, see the formula everywhere. All right, so now let's look at a quick calculation of how DuPont ROE is calculated. And I've created a very basic example for the same. So uh, in this example, we see that we have this net income as $50,000, sales is $200,000. Uh, we have been provided with the assets at the beginning and at the end, 200,000 and 300,000. 
and shareholders equity at the beginning 150000 and shareholders equity at the end is uh, 250000 so let's calculate roe first and then we will calculate the roe using the dupont formula okay so roe is net income divided by your net income divided by your shareholders equity right so this is the formula net income divided by your average shareholders equity so this will be 50 divided by your average shareholders equity right so this is the shareholders equity i'll take the average of these two so this comes out to be 0 0.25 that is 25 percent okay so now let's calculate the dupont roe okay so the dupont roe formula is like this so i'll copy this here let's calculate the dupont roe Obviously, the answer of DuPont ROE and ROE should match. Uh, but let's calculate these one by one. The net income divided by sales is the profit margins. So this is net income divided by sales. So the profit margin is around 25% for this company. Uh, what about the sales divided by average asset? That is asset turnover ratio. How do you calculate that? This is sales divided by your average assets right so this is the assets beginning and ending so you need to do the average of these two this comes out to be 0 0.80 okay so what this means is that the company is generating 0 0.80 dollars per dollar of investments in average assets now the third is the leverage factor let's calculate that too this is the average asset divided by average shareholders equity so let me do that average of the assets and divided by your average of your shareholders equity right so this is what it is and this comes out to be 1.25 okay so what does this mean this signifies that it tells us how the assets is kind of financed so uh, since it's greater than one a part of the asset is financed using debt as well so that's that's the overall uh, interpretation for this leveraged factor okay so how do you calculate dupont roe finally you need to multiply all these three and you will get the final roe so it should be equal to 25 percent finally so this is profit margin multiplied by your asset turnover ratio multiplied by your leverage factor so this comes out to be 0 0.25 that is 25 percent so this is one and the same in both the cases so as we saw, DuPont ROE finally helps us in understanding the individual elements that contribute towards the makings of this ROE final number. Now let's look at how we can go about calculating the DuPont ROE in the case of Colgate. So here is the balance sheet of Colgate and I want you to scroll down to row number, uh, row number yes, 133. So this is where we will do our uh, DuPont analysis. Okay. So do remember that we have already calculated the return on equity earlier and they were something like this. Okay. By doing the DuPont ROE analysis, we are just trying to understand what is contributing to such numbers as such. All right. So uh, let's do that. So for us to calculate DuPont ROE, we will be calculating the profit margins and asset turnover ratios and the leverage factors one by one. And then in this, we'll be multiplying all these three calculations, which we get. Okay. So the first one is the profit margin. Okay. So the profit margin is defined as net sale, net income divided by sales. So here it is the income statement. Net income is 2174 divided by your sales, right? 15454. So that comes out to be 14.1% as profit margins. Okay, so I'll just copy and paste it across the future all the years so that uh, we know how it is. So as you can see, the trend is increasing. So profit margins are kind of increasing every year for Colgate. The second part is the asset turnover ratio that's defined as sales divided by average assets. Okay, so uh, I'll link it from the income statement. The sales numbers are here at the top for 2017 divided by your average assets right so the assets are found in the balance sheet so here it is 
these are the balance sheet numbers and the average asset will be the average of 2016 and 17 all right so this is your asset turnover ratio so it, it is more than 100 percent so this means uh, the company is generating sales which is greater than the amount of uh, assets that they have all right so uh, the asset turnover ratio so as we discussed earlier for retail this is somewhere around two and for other sectors like utility and uh, you know high capital intensive sectors this is actually less than one so anyways here we have it as 124.6 percent that is 1.24 now let's look at the leverage factor that is average assets divided by your average equity. So let's calculate average of the assets. Here it is average assets. And we need to divide this by your average equity. What is the average equity? Here is the total shareholders equity that we have. So this is the number that we get. Okay, so as you can see, these numbers are kind of very inflated uh, because uh, as we have also discussed earlier, uh, that Colgate is doing its buyback every year and they're buying back uh, a lot of amount of uh, shareholders equity. So this is 124.6%, that is uh, 1.25. So what does this asset turnover 1.25 mean? Uh, this means that Colgate is generating sales of $1.25 per dollar of its investments in assets okay so let's copy and paste it for the remaining years and uh, what we note here is that uh, the asset turnover ratio is declining each year and it's closer to 1.06 in december 20. so now let's look at the leverage factor that is the average assets divided by your average equity so let's calculate this average of the assets Average of the assets is here divided by your average equity. So average equity is this much. All right. So what do we get? This we get this as a very high number. As you can see, this is 95.38 and this 56.45 and 18.66. Uh, why this is a very high number? Uh, in order to investigate this further, you need to go back to the shareholders equity section to fully understand what's happening. Uh, we've discussed this earlier as well. Uh, we see that the shareholders equity final figures are very, very small. And the main reason is that the company has a buyback policy. So can you see this treasury stock? Treasury stock represents the amount of shares which the company has bought back and this buyback is continuing every year so this there seems to be like a buyback policy of colgate and because of that they are buying back uh, all the outstanding shares and that has led to the lower shareholders equity if you take the lower shareholders equity we see that the we see that the leverage factor is very very high so now let's calculate the DuPont ROE. What is DuPont ROE? DuPont ROE we said is the multiplication of these three. So let's multiply profit margins by asset turnovers and the leverage factor. So what do we get? It is 162.3%. Okay. What I was trying to tell you is that the ROE that we get here and the ROE that we get through DuPont, it's one and the same. All right. It's just that we now have the numbers to analyze as well as to what is contributing to higher ROE or lower ROE. So as we can see here, the leverage factor is the primary factor which leads to the astounding numbers of uh, ROE. So actually this cannot be compared because this is an exceptional case where the company is buying back and its shareholders equity is very, very small. So this is how you basically go about calculating DuPont ROE. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future video, then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section below. And we come up with very interesting videos on investment banking and core finance topics regularly. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button below so that you can get the notifications about our latest videos as soon as we release them. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day.